So, hello everyone, and um, as you come in, please uh, feel free to join. If you have questions or comments, you can make them on the microphone or, or you can type them in the chat. All right. So today we are going to have a start a new. Uh, it's part of the, the unit on, on uh, social geography, okay, uh, but it's um, kind of, if you wish, a, a subunit on religion, religion and geography. So here we have a map of the world showing the major religions, okay, and where they are concentrated, the distribution of the major religion groups throughout the world. Okay, so as you look at this map, I want you to think about what do you see and what, what comments um, do you have uh, from, from looking at this map? What are the thoughts that come to you as you look at this map of the world religions? Here we have on um, the left side, kind of the legend indicating the key to the different colors, okay, and where the different religions are. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give you some time to, to think about that and see what do you see from looking at this map. <laughs> well, I think the United States is mostly Protestant. Okay. Go to, could you repeat that, Nathan, again? Mm -hmm. Or, nah. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Mm -hmm. Is that the area in the top left? The United States, I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's mostly Protestant. That's right, yes. The United States is mostly Protestant. Okay. We have some areas, okay, along the borders in the south where the the more predominant and then in the northeast, okay, they have more predominance of Roman Catholic. But also, you know, the Protestant religions are very strong in those areas too. Okay, so this map basically shows which is the most predominant religion in, uh, in that area. Okay, so basically between, uh, um, you know, uh, Roman Catholic and Protestant Christians, okay, that is kind of the main basis of religion here in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. What else can you tell from looking at this map of the world? So is my audio cutting out? Is it any better now? Okay. <laughs> so, do, 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 do. okay, so there seems to be some other people also having audio travel here. All right, the technology always gets in the way of a good thing. <laughs> Let me tell you some of the things that I see here, okay, from this, from this map, all right. First off, I see that Christianity, the Christian religions that are basically divided into uh, three main branches. You have the Roman Catholic, the Protestant religions, and the Eastern Orthodox Catholic Church that comprises the largest if you wish, geographical area, okay, in the world, all right? So we have basically all of Europe and Russia being in Christianity and also 
most of the Americas, South, Central, and North America. In uh, South America and in the North part of North America, you have some tribal uh, traditions that are mixed okay, with Christianity or they are just uh, traditional religions here of the Eskimo, the Inuit in the north. And in the area of the Amazon River, okay, in Amazonia, in the central part of uh, South America, you still have some uh, tribal religions, okay? Mm. So, okay, or oh, I don't know how to, to change that, sorry. Annika, I I'm, I'm, won't be able to, to help you with that one. <laughs> so I'll try to remember that Sam is Annika today, so <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Another thing that I notice here is that Islam, which is here the green and the brown, is also a very large geographical area, okay? And also here all the part of Indonesia, lots, you know, a large populated area in Indonesia. Indonesia is one of the most populous countries in the world, okay? It's actually the, the, the biggest population of Muslims, okay, in the world live here in Indonesia. So that is the largest countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Maybe some other, someone else can help you with that. I, I, I really don't know. Sorry about that. <laughs> Another thing that I can see is that um, then we have the Hindu religions that are in India and Southeast Asia, okay, in that, this part of Asia, and then Buddhism, all right, you have in China, Mongolia, in Southeast Asia, the Chinese religions, Shinto religion and Buddhism in Japan, okay, and then <coughs> there are other areas that have also these tribal mixed religions that, that are not part of a world religion, but they are basically very local areas okay, of, a, of, of different religion beliefs. But so we have that the main religions of the world are Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism and Buddhism. So those would be the five main religions. It is very interesting to know that Judaism, even though it is basically a, one of the world religions, is just this little part, you know, where it's predominant in the world, is just in the state of Israel. The reason why Judaism is uh, such influential and is considered a world religion is because both Christianity and Islam are kind of uh, uh, takes from Judaism, okay, and it's one of the most ancient religions. It is also one that, that has influenced uh, the, the history of the world the most, okay. I'm going to play and comment as we, we play it with this video. I have this video link into, into your lesson and see how the, the history of religion moves and expands, okay, throughout the, the, the world, basically, in 5,000 years of religion in 90 seconds. So that is kind of what we are going to, to see, okay? So we start about 3,000 years before Christ with the birth of Krishna, okay? So Krishna is uh, kind of, if you wish, the founder, it would be, no, I don't know if it would be appropriate to, to, to call the, him the founder, but he's the founder of the, the Hindu philosophies and religions, okay? So that starts, uh, okay, Annika is now Annika, thank you. <laughs> so um, that starts, is the most ancient religion really is Hinduism. So we, we see 
let's say if we play 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 how do we continue playing okay I'll play here okay so Hinduism starts growing about 2,000 years before Christ is the birth of Abraham and the start of Judaism okay now we have that after the exodus of the people of Israel from Egypt they conquered the land of Canaan okay that is uh, about you know 700 uh, well no even even more about uh, 1100 BC is the time of Moses and Joshua and so on when they start conquering Canaan mm -hmm. so let's continue here we have that um, about 600 BC the Jerusalem was sacked and the Jewish diaspora started so basically the diaspora is when the Jews were taken captive to Babylon to this area of the world what else do we know that happened at that time okay <laughs> So what else, what else happened here at this time of the Jewish diaspora? But that is something that is particular to our uh, culture as Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. What else happened? I'll say that again, I'm trying to type something to Natasha. Oh, no problem. So the question is, here at the year 600 BC, okay, is the time when Jerusalem was sacked. Was sacked. Right. Mm -hmm. What else happened yeah. that is important for us as members of the LDS Church? Oh, uh, Any ideas? This is something that is, is very, very... Uh, Lehi and his family. Uh -huh. Lehi and his family left Jerusalem. That's right, exactly. So Lehi and his family left Jerusalem. Okay. I'm sorry, I think that there are several people that are saying that my audio is cutting out. I really apologize and I don't know much what to, to do. I'm, I'm going to stop the, um, the webcam, okay, to see if that, that helps. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, so at this time when the Jews were dispersed, Lehi and his family migrated, and we know from the Book of Mormon that they came to America. So for us, that is actually a very important uh, event. Of course, that is not recorded here because they don't know about the history of the Book of Mormon. So let's continue seeing how the religions here of the world evolve. Okay. All right. So now here, about 400, okay, so 480 BC is the birth of Buddha, okay. Buddha is actually, um, his name is Gautama Buddha, all right, or Siddhar, Siddhartha Gautama, that is the actual name of, of, of Buddha, okay. And... So Buddhism started here in the north part of India and starts expanding. We see that it has expanded quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mute everyone else. All right, if you need to, to make a comment, let me know and I'll unmute you or, or through the chat or something like that and see if that helps with the audio for everyone. Okay, so I'm going to keep playing. All right, so here you see the, the, the expansion of Buddhism. And then in the year 32 AD, that is the death of Christ. Okay, 32, 33 AD, the death of Jesus Christ and the beginning, really, of Christianity. Okay, so 
Christianity at the beginning just disperses through the world in very, very, you know, small branches here and there as the 12 apostles and other missionaries start preaching the gospel. It doesn't, it's not like it takes off uh, right away, but it starts very small. Okay. Buddhism expands to China. Christianity keeps expanding to Europe and all of North Africa. Buddhism expands to the Philippines and Japan. Okay. And then we have on the year 570 AD, the birth of Muhammad. And that is going to start uh, the religion of Islam. All right, Islam expands in the Mideast. And then you see how Islam expanded also to Iran, into the eastern part of India, Pakistan. This is the valley of the Indus River. All right. And also Islam expanded quite rapidly through the north of Africa and invaded Spain. So Spain was under Islamic rule for more than 400 years. All right. So that had a huge, huge influence on that. You see the expansion of both Christianity, Islam, Okay, and uh, Buddhism. Now we are going to see again the expansion of Islam here into the area of Turkey. Before this time, all this area was Christian under the Byzantine Empire. All right, when the Turks came in, they were converted to Islam and they started conquering this part too. Islam at this time, so here we are probably around the year 1000 AD, uh, Islam was ruled under a single caliphate. Okay, a caliphate was a, a basically a, a united kingdom under a, the caliph or the king that uh, was in charge of keeping Islam together. All right. Now we have that at this time is the time of the Crusades, both all right, on the east, where the Byzantine Empire and the Christians from Europe were trying to conquer, reconquer Jerusalem from Islam, and also the Spanish starting what is called the Reconquista, which is basically conquering Spain back from Islam for Christianity. Okay, so this is a big, big clash, all right, of these uh, two cultures and world religions. Mm -hmm. Let's keep playing and seeing what else happens. Okay. You see the movements of the different religions of the world. Okay. So we have a Hindu, you know, now we have that Islam conquer most of India and Hinduism is shrinking into what is now Bangladesh, okay, and this area of Southeast Asia and the southern part of, of India. In, and this time is when Islam expands into Indonesia also. All right, and you see here the time of the Reconquista is almost done. All right, do you remember what was the time of the or the year when the Reconquista finished? It is very, very interesting what happened. See also here the expansion of Islam into Europe. Okay. So at this time is when uh, the Turks conquer uh, Constantinople, the, 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 the whole of the Byzantine Empire is uh, done away with, basically, is broken up, and the uh, Muslims are trying to invade Europe. 
they go all the way to Vienna, okay? And they are stopped there in Vienna in a, in a very, very important battle. The, in Spain, on, in the meantime, in Spain, you have the Cid, okay, El Cid Campeador, which is the, the knight under the Spanish monarchs that conquer, okay, the last remnants of the, of the caliphate here in Spain, the caliphate of Cordoba, um, and that is uh, depicted very well in a, in a movie by Charlton Heston. If you have that movie or have access to that, you know, it's, uh, it's actually very important to, to watch. Let's keep playing and seeing how this evolves. All right. Finally, the Reconquista is all done. And that happened, actually, the fall of Seville, that was the last part of Spain to be conquered, was at the same year of Christopher Columbus. That's right, Emma is, is right. The Reconquista ended in 1492. So, you know, uh, it, it's interesting because, you know, we always say in 1492, uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue is to remember that, but actually at that same time is, you know, other huge changes in the history of the world, okay? Particularly was the, the, the Reconquista, the time of, of that, and uh, the fall of Constantinople to the Turks, okay? Christianity keeps expanding both into Eastern Europe now, Christianity is also going to expand into sub-Saharan Africa by missionaries going here into West Africa, Niger, the Congo area. And with the discovery of the Americas, the conquistadors are also bringing with them Christianity to America. All right. So... All these uh, movements of religion have a huge impact, okay, and are impacted also uh, very much by the geographical um, conquest and colonization of these different empires. Okay, let's keep playing that. So we see how Christianity expands all, and then you have basically in the year 1948, the um, founding of the State of Israel. So all this time, the Jewish people, you know, since the time really of the, of the diaspora and, and the time of the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD, Judaism was kind of a religion of a people in, in dispersion. Okay, and then finally in 1948, the state of Israel is funded, funded again, founded, and the Jews have back a home. Okay, and there you have Judaism back in. So here is going to replay again, fast motion, all the history of the world religions. Okay, and how they... They, they expand and, and contract through the moves of different civilization, All right? So, a very, I, I find that very interesting. And um, you see how now uh, Christianity is the largest, okay, of the world religions as far as the, the geographical area and also probably the number of adherents to, to Christianity, but it is also divided into several different churches. Uh, Islam is probably the second largest, about a billion people uh, following Islam, but it's also divided into two major factions, the Shia and the Sunni. Okay. Hinduism has a lot of people because this area of the world, even though it's not the largest area of the world, but there's a lot of people living in, in the area where Hinduism is lived and also Buddhism counting, you know, most of China, Mongolia, uh, Korea, and Japan, okay? 
Mm -hmm. um, so Romney asked a question, this didn't include the USSR's religion during the Cold War. So uh, the, the Soviet Union, even during the time of the Soviet Union, even though the policy of the Soviet Union was that the state was uh, not religion at all, okay, they didn't uh, approve of religion, the people of the Soviet Union or the Russians still pretty much continue uh, believing in the Eastern Orthodox Church, okay, the Russian Orthodox Church. And, and so uh, they, 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 they were still Christians, okay, and the church had to, you know, kind of survive without the support of, of the state. All right, so the people still were, were pretty much uh, living, trying to live as, as best as possible their, their religion, their faith, all right? So does that help to put kind of in context all the different religions of the world? So here we have again the map of the, of the different world religions and we see here a little bit more of the different separations of, um, of the, the different parts of Christianity, Islam and, and Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Annika says they had to do it undercover, but it was still there and very much alive. That is that is correct. So that is the important one important point that I want you to understand is that religion is a, um, is such a very important part of the culture and and the makeup of a per of a you know a person, a community, a society that is not something that can be, you know, uh, easily put aside or overlooked, okay, or just uh, uh, done away with, all right? Everywhere where that has been tried, that has actually led to resistance and conflict and people basically dig in in order to continue living their religion their religion and their beliefs as best as uh, they can, okay? In this map, I don't know if you can see uh, some of these dots, okay, throughout the map. Those are areas of the world where Judaism also has some concentration, okay, of population. It's not predominant, but you have, you know, large concentrations of Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, like our government, you know, our government now is very, very uh, much, if you wish, uh, uh, unsupported or unsupportive of religion, all right, almost hostile to, to religion. Well, people react to that by actually uh, digging in and, and living their religion better, okay. If, if you wish, all right, because it's, it's such an important part for, for everyone. So, yeah, mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Ronnie. I just wanted to, um, I'm, my, my follow-up comments, what I put, what I typed there is, um, with the immigration, a lot of the Mexicans believe in Jesus Christ. They, they are religious. And yet, in all their discussions, they don't talk about how industrious they are. They don't talk how important it is that they teach their children to keep the laws of the land, mm -hmm. and to be moral and stuff like that. And so I'm like, our government isn't talking about that at all. So. Yes, yeah, that is, that is an interesting problem. It's an interesting dilemma. Okay. Um... In Latin America, you know, myself coming from Latin America, uh, you know, Argentina is predominantly Roman Catholic, but you see that most people are uh, just very nominal in their religion, okay? So they, they, they are Catholic, they don't want, you know, they don't do much about it, okay? 
uh, but they don't want to change either. You know, and so some some religions are very kind of laissez faire. Basically, that means uh, let it be, and it means basically you you live your life however you want to. Okay, and and others are a lot more uh, orthodox. Okay, or dogmatic that they live their religion um, better, if you wish, more devoutly. Okay. And, and so that is you. You also you encounter that almost in any uh, any religion. We have certainly you know in in the uh, Mormon Church in our church we have active members and less active members, and they certainly live their their religion differently. Okay, let me see here. Annika says. Just read the Constitution with the knowledge of the Founding Fathers if you want to know if it, is, if it was their intention to have a separation of church or a state the way we do now. Mm -hmm. And Rodney says, there is such a thing as separation of church and state in the Constitution. And, well, and then you correct and says there is no such thing. That is true. Okay, and I think that Annika tries to point that out also that this um, issue here about separation between church and state, uh, it is actually a creation of the Supreme Court. It's not constitutional. And what the founding fathers were trying to do was to ensure that the state didn't sponsor ever a, a religion, a particular religion. That was kind of, the, if you wish, the most of the separation. But it never, it never, uh, the founding fathers never envisioned that the state, the government of America, would be hostile to the free expression of religion by, by its people. Mm -hmm. Annika says, with a high portion of native people here in Bolivia, there is also a large portion that mesh another religion and their native religion. Mm -hmm. You keep cutting out for like five second periods and there is a static. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I hope that the video captures the audio better, okay? And, um, and then you can, you can probably uh, hear that better in the video. Uh, you know, I think that this is a go-to meeting issue. Okay, I'm going to report that. So, uh, Annika is correct also in describing, and this is one of the problems of, uh, the, the, of Christianity in a lot of areas in South America. I'm, I'm sorry about the poor sound quality. Okay. And um, that is a big problem of a lot of parts of South America where people mix the Roman Catholic Church with their native beliefs. Uh, I've, I saw that a lot in the north of Argentina and Bolivia. Um, so that, that, is, that, is, that, was, that is a big problem. Annika says they didn't want it to be another new American religion, but they did want it to protect the ability to worship freely whatever religion they want to. That's right. So the founding fathers, when they set up in the Constitution, the, the First Amendment, mm -hmm. okay, uh, so in, in the First Amendment, when, the, when basically the First Amendment says that Congress shall not uh, infringe on the, shall not establish any religion or infringe in the free exercise of religion. So that is actually a limitation of what Congress and what the government can do, not on what the people could do. And, um, you know, the, 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 the sad state of things now, nowadays here in America is that uh, the courts have interpreted and said, well, anybody that is an employee of the government, including teachers, school officials, 
cannot endorse any religion because they are part of the government, okay, if you wish, and so they cannot pray, we cannot condone prayer in a school or any expression of religion in anything that is part of the government. And because the, the government puts money into education, that is where they have a, that, that misunderstanding. Okay, it is a huge misunderstanding because it now is affecting really the expression of people, of their religion beliefs, uh, and, and, and Congress is basically infringing on the, on the free exercise of religion. Mm -hmm. So they did not say that there had to be a separation of church and state. That's right. So the, the expression separation of church and state was in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to his nephew kind of explaining some of the concepts of the Constitution and the First Amendment, but that is not part of the Constitution, it's not part of any uh, constitutional law that was quoted by a decision of the Supreme Court when they decided that they couldn't, you know, public schools couldn't have, say, prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have one thing to say. I'm just surprised that they did that law or they did that ruling with one witness. Yeah. Mainly one. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was no two founding fathers that said that. There was just one. You know, so, and, and and the thing is that if if Thomas Jefferson would have thought that his letter, okay, would have been taken to mean that, he would have never written that, okay? Because Jefferson was a huge proponent of religion in the public sphere, all right? He, when he was president, he declared many times a national fast and prayer days, you know? So... Uh, yeah, they take that one sentence. That, context. That's right. And it, they don't put they don't put anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It is it is really really a, a takeover of uh, you know basically of the the atheist okay uh, into into our religious rights. Mm -hmm. So. Mm, so Annika says, I, I wanted to no, invite my second grade class to my baptism. Know. Go ahead, Romney. So Annika said, I had wanted to invite my second grade class to my baptism, but I couldn't even tell them while on the school grounds. All right. And, you know, that, that is uh, completely illegal because uh, Annika, any student, is not an employee of the government. Okay, so you are really a free agent, so you shouldn't be infringed upon your expressions of religious uh, belief. All right. In Argentina, growing up, I had more religious liberty, really, there, where the majority you know, were Catholic, than says you have here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Romney. I was researching, and I found out that the phrase separation of church and state is found in another constitution. Can you guess what constitution that is? Which one? The USSR's Constitution, 1976, I think Article 62, uh -huh. Okay, so there, there you have but it, I, you know. Really not, not a very good example to, to follow. Mm -hmm. no. So, uh, one time I was in seminary, and um, I, we were talking about like end of term, 
and like people need to go over and do testing or whatever, and you know, seminaries needs to stay out of it or whatever. And some people, I asked him like, why? And he's like, well, there's like this weird thing in the Constitution. It's like separation of church and state. And I said, where? It's <laughs> like it's it's in there. I'm like really? I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna look for those words. That's when I found out they're not in the American Constitution. They're in the Communist USSR Constitution. Constitution. Yeah, yeah. No, it it is really. This is what we are having now is really a perversion. Okay, so is Satan really squashing the freedom of religion of America, which is the freest country in the history of the world and the most tolerant country in the history of the world as far as religions go? And Satan is really perverting our government and our constitution by, by doing this. So uh, this is just a frontal attack on, on uh, our religious freedom, okay? And, and you hear, you know, Elder Oaks and several of the, the leaders of the church talking about religious freedom and how we should fight to preserve our religious freedom and everything. Most of the history of the world is not a history of religious freedom and tolerance. It is actually the opposite. And so what we are doing now here in America, basically squandering our freedom of religion and uh, giving all that away, is a very, very dangerous position to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Mackenzie says, man, around here we all talk about our different religions, even at school. Like in history class, we actually had a discussion on religious faith, but he told us not to tell the other teachers about it. Okay, so I have to tell you, Mackenzie, that is a, a very good way to do it, a very courageous teacher to allow that. But, you know, uh, sadly enough, that is not a common thing. Very, very sadly, here in Utah, okay, I'm, I'm here in Utah, my, my daughter goes to a public high school, and uh, she has been many times chastised by other Latter-day Saint teachers that cow to the impositions of the state and not letting the students talk about religion or pray or do anything that has to do with uh, their religion, okay? And these are, you know, what they, they consider themselves to be very good Latter-day Saint, Saint teachers, but they are actually cowards, I, I would say, you know, and, and, and putting the interest of their own jobs and the state before God. Okay, so I, I have to tell you that is my my take on that. All right, so this is this is a very very uh, interesting time that we live in. Okay, so yeah, so we need to understand really well what our rights are and what the Constitution says, what the Constitution does not say. And where are all these things I are coming from? Okay. So, yeah, Mackenzie says, I must have had some pretty good teachers. Yes, very courageous teachers, I would say, because here is not something that happens uh, all the time. In fact, it, 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 it happens, you know, like I was saying, many, many times uh, teachers cow and they don't let other Mormon students express their, their religious beliefs. Um, in Argentina, when I was growing up, uh, I was the only Mormon student in my school, like Natasha says there, and I was able to invite all my fellow students to my baptism, okay? I think that one of them came, you know, no, no, nothing happened, you know, it's not like I was doing a lot of missionary work or anything like that, but... All my, my companions at school, they knew that I was a Mormon. They, they, I expressed that belief openly. I remember when, when we were talking in history about, you know, the, 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 the American Indians and so on. I 
also wrote down and explained to the class about the Book of Mormon and, and where we believe the theory that the, the American Indians, or at least part of the American Indians, come from uh, Jerusalem, okay, and where that was recorded and, and so on. So I had, like I was saying, I had more, more freedom of religion, really, there than my children uh, have here in Utah. Okay, and, and the saddest thing really is to see our own uh, Latter-day Saint teachers censoring themselves uh, from expressing their religion. Okay, so very, very sad, sad thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Annika says, we were learning about Rome and I knew that Christ's life was right at the center of the whole thing, but I could only talk to my teacher about it after he literally would have lost his job for teaching it. This was in an IB school in Ukraine. He actually started the conversation be be with me because he knew I knew what really happened during that time and he really wanted to let me know he knew too. But he wanted to keep his job so he and his wife wouldn't be get stranded in Ukraine. Okay, so, so sad. So sad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if we don't stand for our religious rights, okay, if we don't stand for our religious rights, they are going to be taken. And sadly enough, I actually see so many, many people that basically, uh, you know, uh, because of, of fear, fear of men, fear of losing their jobs or whatever, they don't stand up for those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of atheists in my class there in Ukraine, okay, and they would have put a huge fuss about it. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. So the atheists are not cowards, okay, but sometimes I, I believe that we, we actually are, okay. So it's, it's really a sad thing, but we need to, to stand up not only for our religious uh, rights, but also for the religious rights of everyone else, okay? So in the lesson, I put links here to the different, to the articles about the different world religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, okay, Buddhism, and uh, Jainism, and Shikism, okay, Shikism and Jainism are actually different uh, branches, if you wish, of Hinduism, all right, so these are, these are kind of large articles, and what I'm going to do for the assignment for this lesson is I'm going to ask you actually to study one of these uh, world religions, a different one other than Christianity. I think that most of, most of you would be, um, um, you know, aware of Christianity. We, you know, we, we kind of grow up on, on that, okay? So, yeah, the IEB schools, International Baccalaureate, okay, but are, I don't know the spelling either, <laughs> but that, those are kind of uh, schools that, that are set up abroad uh, internationally for people that are uh, kind of uh, studying in different countries, okay, so like Annika and, and Sam. So I'm actually very happy and glad that you are doing family school now here with us. Really grateful for this opportunity. So what I would like you is to study one of these articles and I'm going to ask you to probably write um, something about it, okay? What, what uh, comes to mind. Don't, you know, these articles go in a, into a lot of detail, if you wish. So most of the articles in uh, Wikipedia, they start kind of with an introduction. And then you have very, you know, detailed parts of the different uh, articles. So in here, in this case, what I want you is to look at the content and 
uh, think what are the parts that I, I uh, are more interested in and so study those and then you would like I would like you to write a paper on on that part on what you have learned so for example you know in, in Judaism you may be thinking well you know let me let me look about the Jewish observances what are the practices of the Jewish religion and so you would read this section in more detail okay or what is the history of Judaism or the relationship between Judaism and other religions okay and so you concentrate on on those things Islam the same thing you know so you would say okay what are the things that I want to learn about Islam for example it's very interesting to learn about the five pillars of Islam the main religious practices of, of Islam and how they do it and everything and it's very interesting that a, a lot of uh, Islam has very um, close resemblance to our religion my brother uh, has is a consultant and has been doing some work uh, in Oman and uh, Abu Dhabi and he basically said that you know most of the people the the the, the regular uh, Muslims there in those places they live their lives very similar to how we live our lives you know with family prayer fasting you know doing good things really okay so yeah mm -hmm. so yes it's true the atheists should not hate other religious people you know i don't think that they have any higher uh, rights okay of anybody else mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to hate anyone really we have to give everyone the freedom to to choose okay and to live their religion however they they feel proper but we also like the the 12th article of faith says we we claim that right also for our own selves okay so uh, that is going to be the the assignment to to learn about one of these uh, actual uh, world religions it is interesting that the church, okay, usually sends uh, leaders of the church to speak at gatherings of world religions. So this is an article on November 1993, and there's kind of a, a more recent one, okay, in 2009, and nine, the church represented at world religious conference in Kazakhstan, okay. So here the area presidency, Elder Piper of the first quorum of the 70, he was sent, okay, to represent the church in this congress in Kazakhstan with uh, other um, delegations, so 75 delegations from religious traditions, including Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, Judaism, Shintoism, and Zoroastrianism. Okay, so really an interesting uh, gathering of world leaders. And uh, here you see Elder Piper representing the Mormon Church, representing our church in this Congress of World Religions. So um, we have to, to be very aware of what is going on of the, the, the really the real persecution that happens to people of faith okay so now nowadays I can see that we are having some um, some um, persecution between like we were talking about between atheists okay and, and people of faith but also there are some other churches that other religions that are persecuting other people okay um, we see we see issues nowadays of uh, not not the main core of muslims but there are some parts of islam 
okay, is radical Islam, we would call them, that persecute Christians and Jews, okay, and anybody else that they don't consider that are Muslim enough, really. So, uh, these are precarious times, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, during these classes, I want you to learn about <clears throat> these other religions of the world, study them in order to gain a better understanding of them. I really <clears throat> always feel that ignorance is one of the highest forms of ingratitude. Okay, So <clears throat> if we ignore other people's faith and what they believe, and what they, you know, what is their religious motivation and everything, that is also a, a form of us not to to live our our religion. Okay, so <coughs> Rodney says it is so silly. We should we all should be able to speak our mind, and yet United States basically has outlawed your own thoughts of certain things. It should change, and there should be freedom. Yeah. I totally agree. We are in a sad state, but <clears throat> but uh, freedom of speech goes always, absolutely, absolutely. And so uh, um, the the I always remember that when Joseph Smith founded the city of Naboo, in the charter of the city of Naboo. He put there, and this was approved by the city council, and he said that the city was open to all Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Mohammedans, okay, that would be the, 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 the people of Islam, you know, Muslims, all right, and he actually really meant that, okay, he meant that, all right. It wasn't just that he was putting that in the charter, but he would have, okay, welcome anyone of any other religion. And that wasn't something that was very common in those days, okay? But in the city charter of Nauvoo, Joseph Smith was very open and welcoming of, of other people of other faiths, okay? And it is, it is, we are getting closer to the second coming. That's great, okay? But things are going to get uh, very difficult, all right? And, and the more that we know about these things, about the history of religion and what other people believe and how to live respecting one another, the better it's going to be for us, okay? So let's uh, finish class. I have to go really fast today, but I would like to invite uh, someone to offer the closing prayer. Okay, I'm going to unmute everyone. <clears throat> um, who would like to, to offer the prayer for us? Haley, do you have a microphone? They are available. Would you like to pray? All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, one second. All right. <laughs> oh dear, kind and gracious to you. Be here together and to learn the things we have learned. We're grateful for our religion and for the freedom of religion that we have, even though it's not as much as we wish it is. And we're grateful for all of our freedoms and for the people who fought for them. And please bless us that we will be able to keep the spirit with us for the rest of the day and that we'll be able to complete our assignment and to learn as much as we possibly can. And we see these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Haley, for that beautiful prayer. And thank you, everyone, for your participation and comments in the chat. I hope that the sound wasn't too, too bad. And I will upload the, the video of the, the class as soon as I can. Okay? Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.